We want to welcome you guys to L3 Perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Glenn Davis. I'm sitting here with my guy, Cameron Macias. It's your boy, Killer Cam. What's going on, guys? Hey, welcome back to the L3 Perspective, where we talk life, love, leadership. Sitting here with my guy, the guy, Coach Cam. Coach Cam, what's <laughs> up? <laughs> um, but yeah, again, my guy Cameron Macias. Um, Cam, man, we're just getting back from Arizona, mm -hmm. back to California. Yep. Yeah, we took a took a little business trip out there, you know, because we're doing things. No, uh, it was good. It was. Like we talked about, is that a lot of people don't know right now the uh, all the planets are aligned. So we came up, you know. So we're real big on like like manifestation, positive thinking, you know, positive mindset. And um, the trip to Arizona, I think, like it just solidified all like a lot of the things, the back office conversations we've yeah. had, right? Like about intentionality. You know, where's your mind at when you're doing things? Uh, you know, being productive, not busy, right. <laughs> you know, like um, thinking multiple steps ahead, not just like, you know, every, it, I was up here like running the race every single moment. Right. Um, so it was it was really cool. And I think it was nice or it was nice from my perspective, at least to be around a lot of people who have that mindset. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I, I agree, man. It's uh, a beautiful thing. You talk about manifestation. Um, mm. I feel like definitely in a season. Yeah. Like, business, family, you know, relationships where, you know, things are just consistently aligning mm -hmm. up from speaking it from, you know, months back just into existence, you know. So uh, it's been a beautiful thing. I had a, I had a great time out in Arizona, you know, um, just to kind of see you and your element and your business <laughs> element. That was kind of cool. Glenn got to see me wear a coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but so, so you talk about manifestation. Yeah. Um, let's, let's talk about that real quick. Mm. Um, why is that important to you or has it been important to you in your life? And like, how has that kind of like helped you get to where you are, Yeah, you know, to date? I think it's like, I'm just real big on like, if you can see it and you can achieve it type, you yeah. know, the corny saying that they told us when we were yeah, kids, yeah, yeah. Like, I've been big on, I've always been big on that though. Right. Like I'm, I've always been, um, very big on, don't tell me I can't do something. Mm -hmm. Uh, just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it's not a possibility. Yeah. And so, but with manifestation, the the difference is, is you're not like just saying these things. Right. Like you legitimately are almost in a sense, like conjuring the powers yeah. of the universe to help you get to this point. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of those things that a lot of times you may not even understand the inner workings of what's being done. Yeah. Like in your mind, you're saying like, oh, I, I want this. Yeah. And, or I want this to happen. And in reality, like something will happen mm -hmm. that allows that to happen. But in the moment, mm -hmm. it, it, it looks as if the universe is actually going against what you want, what you want to happen. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As, uh, when I was out in Arizona, I remember this saying I used to tell myself years and years, years ago. Mm -hmm. And I started saying it to my kids and it was like, if you can... Um, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Yeah. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. It was throughout those meetings, I kept I kept saying that. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, I I really believe in that. Right. When you talk vision, when you talk manifestation, when you talk about intentionality, like those things are super key, and and the belief part of it as well. That's obviously extremely yeah. key. So, uh, yeah, that time out in Arizona, man, it was very very productive. Um, like I said, it's always good to be around people. Who who share the same thoughts, the same um, the same uh, intention, the same motivations, desires, aspirations, all that you know, yeah. like just that environment, man. The environment that you're in is mm -hmm. super super key. It really is. <laughs> uh, no, I, I I agree. Like it's it's like really thinking about what's going on and mm -hmm. and how you're moving forward, right? Right. But but I think what a lot of people don't think about too is that that uh, manifestation can go the other way oh yeah so when you're thinking negative thoughts things can go negatively right right if you're always thinking about this and don't get me wrong like no one's telling you like not to think about your yeah. problems or but it's how are you thinking about your problems to think about the solutions to mm -hmm. it rather than self-loathing right. or you know um and, and nothing wrong with depression we all we've all gone through it but more so 
what actions are you taking to like mm-hmm. get past kind of those those negative things that are happening or those negative thoughts right because it all happens we all have them and it's it's perfectly okay but i think kind of that mental resilience really comes from how are what tools do you have at your disposal yeah. to get past those things yeah, yeah yeah that's that's important i think that's something that's not talked about i know when i was military like the word resiliency got mm. thrown around, but I feel like, <laughs> like no kidding, like it's it's something that needs to be talked about and like yeah. the how to behind it, right? Like what are tips that, uh, what are some things that you can do? I know for me, one of the things that helped me to kind of stay resilient and to to push through those barriers when, you know, again I'm human as well, so yeah, when, yeah, yeah. when when my mind it doesn't go into dark space too often, like yeah, actually very, like really, <laughs> really never. But no, I'm just kidding. But, like, uh, when it goes into that space, like, yeah. you know, really taking that time to, like, okay, cool, I need to go de- decompress. What are mm-hmm. the things that I enjoy doing? You know, what are yeah. what are the hobbies I that I may have not have done in the last quarter that, you know, whether it's reading, whether it's going for a walk, or yeah. whatever it is. And I think that's important for people to know, like, you know, really just becoming to be centered. Yeah. So that you can bounce back and mm-hmm. be resilient, right? Yeah. So. What's that? It's that, um, like, what's your North Star type thinking, mm-hmm. right? Like, and I think... Some people don't know what that is. Right. You know, mm-hmm. some people don't know or haven't known for at least an extended amount of time, maybe, um, what levels them out. Like, yeah. what's that, like, like neutral space? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's the space where, like, nothing's going too great, mm-hmm. nothing's going too bad? Like, things are neutral. Right. Especially in maybe the environments that we've been in because it's a lot of go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was and just thinking It's, it's yeah. so go, go, go. Uh, you know, me and Nett talked about this, is that, you know, for the last probably decade, mm-hmm. both of us have felt that it was just a constant state of, of chaos, yeah. in a sense. Mm-hmm. And now that things have leveled out in it, like, it's not as stressful. Right. It almost feels you know, alien, like, you know, it it feels out of place that we don't feel this, this sort of chaos in our life. And I remember telling her, I said, that's just because you've lived in, like, we, we both have realistically, um, lived in this, this state of complete chaos for so long that, um, it feels unnatural not to be in that. Just like the whole, people are so used to fake people that when Mm -hmm. they meet real people, they think those people are fake. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I had a phone call the other day with a guy that's that's interested in, in the financial industry, and so we were kind of talking business. Yeah. And as I was talking to him, like he was just like, "Yo, it's very refreshing to mm-hmm. to hear someone who is just seems to be very thorough." Yeah. And I was like, you know, it's it's funny you say that because even for me, um, you know, you don't really come across too many people. Yeah. That it, I mean, it's like you have to navigate through so many fake people to get to that yeah. real person, yeah. right? And so. It's important. It is very, very important. Yeah. <laughs> to to find those real people and stay connected with them in a sense, mm-hmm. even if it's not business, even if it's just, hey, let's go connect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, again, because when you talk about being resilient and going into those dark spaces, sometimes that individual is the one that can help you. Right? Mm-hmm. Just knowing that you have a person that can help pull you through. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I mean, and that's and that kind of goes back. I think I I've, I've talked about it before. Is um the what's in it for me mm-hmm. mindset and cause that's how it is with everybody. Yeah. But I think too many times people get the, the whiff them as they say, yeah. uh, mix too much up with like a monetary value. You know, I'm very particular with my time mm-hmm. as most people know. And so I tell people, if you have access to me yeah. on a whim, there's yeah. a reason for that. Mm-hmm. And whether it's, monetary whether it's business relationship Mm -hmm. or honestly whether it's just i enjoy talking to you because i need to have genuine conversation in my life on a normal basis or else i will lose my shit (laughs) uh you know and so i think too many times people get stuck in the pattern of thinking that asking for just a good conversation is Mm -hmm. is somehow like a bad thing Mm -hmm. um you know I, i was listening to this book earlier where it was funny the guy's like, he's being very facetious. Like he's talking about human communication and he's like, I'm going to give you some really hard words um, about how to show people that you're interested. And he was like, Hmm, that's interesting. (laughs) Nice. Tell me more. (laughs) And realistically, it's like, he's like the best way to keep communication going is 
be genuinely interested in what people are saying yeah. rather than just having an agenda. Yeah, so it's funny you say that, man. When you talk about the communication, it requires work. It's oh, a lot of work. Listen, active like, listening active, is is yes. is strenuous. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was I was talking with Tegan the other day, man, and we were just kind of just talking about that in general. Like, mm. you know, when you think about anything that you're trying to do, it requires work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like from a sense of like, if I'm overweight and I'm like, you know what, my goal is to go get into the gym. Yeah, and I want to whatever whatever that fitness goal is, right? It requires work. Yeah, this business. You know, you're like, hey, I want to achieve X, Y, Z. I want to impact so many people. It requires work. If yeah. In the community, it requires work. Like Hell everything work. <laughs> requires work. And then so, but the but the but the 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 piece of that is with the communication is that if I'm looking to strengthen my communication with mm. you or in my relationship or whatever, it requires work. Yep. <laughs> so. Oh, hella work. Yeah. No, I agree, and that's, and I told people like, yo, if you if you're on an hour long conversation with somebody is. If you're if you're legitimately listening, right. you should need like a 15 minute break. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I showed somebody my schedule yesterday, and I showed them that I built buffers into my scheduler yeah. so that nobody can book appointments back to back. Right. It always gives me 15 <laughs> minutes. Right. And sometimes I get lucky to where you know the appointment didn't take as long as it was supposed to anyway, so mm-hmm. I get an extra 15 plus right. whatever time was saved on the meeting but in general i always have time to take like a breather yeah because i need it yeah if any if i don't it's my own fault because i booked yeah. something like back to back yeah and then i'm mad at myself but you, but you know that because you spent enough time with yourself to yeah. know that okay cool i i need this buffer. yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah that's same thing i locked my schedule on mondays and fridays mm-hmm because doing appointments Monday through Friday is exhausting. Gotcha. And so because it's Monday and Friday, I then get four days mm-hmm. of at least probably a low amount of meetings. I have meetings that I have to have, so right. those are still happening. But in a general sense, it's not the hustle and bustle of like a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Tuesday, yeah. where I might have anywhere from five to 15 appointments. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing where you can control your own <laughs> schedule. <laughs> So that's why I stayed a recruiter for so long. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I go into the financial industry so I could do my own thing. That's why I'm a coach. Because yeah. I wanna I don't want to work for anybody, man. That's listed, like listed, listed. That, that's 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 <laughs> because I don't want to work for nobody. Um yeah. and I know some people say like that's impossible because you still gotta like work for yourself. And it's mm-hmm. like I get that facet of it, but I I don't want anybody telling me what efforts mm-hmm. to make or, or and or not to make. Yeah. I think I think people think about that too. Like I've heard that statement like Anybody who says that they don't want to work for somebody, like they're probably actually lazy. And it's like, no, um, I work really hard. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is that I have worked for people who have given me a ceiling. So I don't want that ceiling. It's not that I mind working for people. I don't like the ceiling that comes for working from working right. for somebody else. I don't like that I have to wait for you to give me a promotion. Yeah. I don't like that I have to wait for you to tell me that I can go somewhere. I don't like that. I have to wait for you to tell me if I can take a day off. Hmm. I feel you. No ceilings here. Make that. Make that an Instagram reel. <laughs> Pop that mug. <laughs> so, so real quick, life, love, leadership. Oh, here he's gonna hit me with it. I'm hitting with it. <laughs> life, love, leadership. Three very important topics, very essential to life. Um, pick one of those or or blend all three. Uh, share something with our listeners on life, love, or leadership. Um. So I'm greedy. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna do all three. I uh, found that out in Arizona. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm, I'm greedy as hell. Uh, so is that you want the last dumpling? Oh, don't take it. <laughs> but so 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 the whole reason that I love the idea that you came up with with this is because they all blend, right? They all blend into. They really life. do. They re- I mean, yeah, they yeah, really yeah. do. Like, you know, what do you do? Because, like, you know, I think something you guys found out about me when we were in Arizona was I told you guys how. I had been really like pushed down a lot of my life. Right. Yeah. yeah like yeah. a lot of people told me like I wasn't gonna be anything yeah. or you know um, people like educators were like you ain't gonna be shit, bro. Like yeah. and people were like oh my god how could I'm like you guys yeah. think that doesn't happen? Right. Come on, man. And so, but through my mother's love mm-hmm. and the love of myself, yeah. I was able to live my life very well. Right. Mm-hmm. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Should turn that off. But uh. 
because of that, I like so like because of the love that I got from my mother and my and, and my grandmother, um, I was able to live my life effectively without kind of that like chip on my shoulder right. for life, right? Like like I just like oh you don't like me, yeah. I'll I'll keep it me keep it moving, man. Yeah. Um, now that's not to say though that it didn't affect me, mm-hmm. because you know when I got older, um, I started kind of realizing maybe how some of those things were affecting me as far as like kind of like carrot chasing it like I just yeah. like people's approval I was very big on like oh pl- like, give me your approval mm-hmm. and so but I had good leaders mm. to help me through that like hey like like you're enough type stuff right, right? like yeah. hey man like you don't like Cam needs to look out for Cam like you don't got to be so worried about what everybody else thinks because no shit like you're just a special type of person right. and honestly there's probably going to be more people that dislike you than like you mm. but but the people that like you like those are your ride or dies bro right. like those are the people that if they've seen through all the stuff that other people supposedly can't see through, like those are those are your the ones you stick with, and I was like, all right, bet. And so, um, I took that also in turn is, you know, what my leadership as far as I've always been somewhat I call it like a like a misfit misfit magnet. Okay. So the people, so the people who I hear, oh, like they're grumpy or right. you know whatever, they're a pain in the ass, whatever, have this like that. I'm like. I'm going to make them my friend. <laughs> and and I've done it on every single occasion. And my mom said the same thing, you know, and I, I didn't even realize that I had been doing that since I was a kid. Mm. She's like, since you were a kid, you've always told me how you've befriended the person who might not have had a lot of friends. Um, and for, and for some reason or another, you've mm-hmm. always been able to understand them. And I'm like, I don't know, it's cause I'm a misfit myself. <laughs> so, so greedy, shout out to all the misfits. Shout out to all the misfits you feel me? So greediness, Holler at you, boy. Um, you. What about you? That was cool. Um, well, like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and blend mine as well. <laughs> you know, I feel it's only fair to our viewers. Uh, I would say I would start off with leadership. And the reason why is because I'm in a season where I'm being very, very intentional of how I lead my home, how yeah. I lead my family. Yeah. And so um, I, I have this saying that I've always said for years and is if you're in a position to lead, lead with a purpose. Yeah. If you're in a position to follow, follow with a purpose to lead. Yeah. Right. And I, I say that because of leading, you know, having conversations with my with, with my kids of, on how important how important followership is just mm. as much as it is important with leadership. So yeah. just kind of living through that example mm-hmm. um, on the uh, the love side. Just again, they're my inspiration, man. So just loving the family yeah. to keep pushing to elevate. <laughs> And, and I miss and, you already. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Five minutes into the drive. Um, and then the the last one, as far as life, man, like you mentioned, they all blend into mm-hmm. blend into each other. And so I'm I am in this in this season. I'm um, looking at past experiences of, yeah. of what choices I've made in life mm-hmm. that have had consequences, mm-hmm. and you know whether I've learned from them then or didn't, mm-hmm. and then really reevaluating because the decisions you make today affect your tomorrow. Facts. Right, and so the decisions I made yesterday yep. affected my today, and so I'm being very intentional with cultivating a very, very healthy uh, love mm-hmm. uh, by leading, uh, yep. because it's going to impact life. Facts. So that's what I have. L3 perspective. We appreciate y'all. As per the usual, like, share, subscribe, follow. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us what you do like. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only gonna get it's only gonna get better from here. I don't know if y'all can tell the difference. We got a different background now. <laughs> we got lights. We got cameras and stuff coming. Like we we are dedicated to bringing you guys value. Uh, not only from a, a content as far as what we're speaking and what we look like, but uh, you know from a technology standpoint because it's 2023, <laughs> right? We gotta look good. So, anyways, um, we appreciate y'all, and we will see y'all later. Absolutely. Peace.